everybody welcome back to the essential aisle Erin here to make another cold process soap today we are making more custom order cold process soap I know that <laughs> I make a lot of custom order soap and that's because a majority of the orders that I have are custom orders <laughs> so I don't know if I need to change something about my current lineup in my Etsy shop or what but if you're annoyed by the custom orders I apologize, but they allow me to make more soap, so I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> now, today, you might see there's a lot of stuff going on in the background over here, and the table is kind of messy, which I apologize for, but there is a lot going on. I'm going to be making two soaps today, two tomorrow, and then two the following day, because I have six left in this order that I need to make. At least two of them are repeats from the last two custom orders. It's the same customer, not the person that ordered the pine tar, but the person that usually orders these cold process soaps. So I won't be filming those just because I've already done them at least twice and I don't want to keep doing those same soaps on film every couple of months or so because I just feel like that would be really boring for you all because the design itself might change a little bit but the colors and the process and everything is still the same. If you disagree and you do want to see those videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I don't mind to do them again, but like I said, I just don't want you all to get bored. So I thought I would throw that out there. Okay, so what you all just missed <laughs> is my phone got slung out of its tiny little tripod because the tripod that I'm currently using is an extremely cheap one and it's just it's not very good it served its purpose for several months so it did a pretty good job but I have a new tripod that I just haven't gotten out of the box yet I just got it yesterday so maybe for the next two soaps after this I'm going to be doing them one after another so I don't really want to stop to do that but today I'm going to be making Kentucky bourbon this is from Brambleberry now for those of you that don't know I am in Kentucky I know what bourbon smells like <laughs> this does not smell like bourbon at all <laughs> and if you know anything about bourbon they all have sort of these base notes to them as far as flavors I guess and it's just I'm not really sure how to describe it it sort of smells like the base notes that are in a bourbon I, I'm not entirely sure what notes those are I get a little bit of amber I don't know maybe that's wrong I'll put the fragrance notes up on the screen if I can find them I think Brambleberry has these listed it's strange sometimes soap companies or soap supply companies will put up fragrance notes and sometimes they won't so if I'm able to find those I will but to me this is a very masculine smelling soap and she did request for this order that there be several masculine soaps in it she had several men express interest in her soaps but up to this point they have been almost all female-ish or just slightly more feminine than most men i guess as far as her customer base were interested in which is fine now one thing to note or two things to note uh let me see if i can get it to there we go it does say it slightly accelerates and discolors to light brown. That is fine because the colors we're using today are going to be the Silver Mist Mica. And in the, in the little jar, it looks sort of like a blue, silver, gunmetal color. But I've used this before and... It does say it's okay for cold processed soap, but it just turns into a very flat gray. So I thought that would be nice for a men's soap. And I'm also going to be doing an accent in this Maya Gold Mica Powder. This is that gold that's sort of in the middle of bronze and gold. It's very nice and very shimmery. I really like it. I think this will make a really striking soap 
as far as the contrasting colors. I have a soap in my line that is similar that I made using the Copper Penny Mica and Indigo Powder. And it's just, it's a really visually striking soap in my opinion because it's very contrasting and very nice. So, I guess that's all I'm going to get into. <laughs> so let's just jump right into the making of this soap. So I am seeing a little bit of thickening already. So I am going to hand mix the rest of it. My Lyle water sort of sunk to the bottom and I had to run and rinse out my container really quick. My second container because I don't have an extra one super handy right now. So we'll see how this goes. It's not too terribly thick, but I do have some oil that has... Ooh. that hasn't completely mixed in yet. So I'm just going to stir that in by hand. It won't take much. And I'm just gonna check for separation, see if I see anything crazy going on. And at this point, I don't. So I think I'm going to pour off a little bit for my colors. And because it is thickening, I am going to mix the colors in by hand instead of using the stick blender, which may end up being a mistake, <laughs> but we'll see. And for this design, I do want to do a drop. Eh, I'm changing my mind as I'm doing it. I'm going to try something new. I'm basically going to do sort of in, in, in the pot swirl, but I'm also, well, I'll just have to show you. <laughs> I will just have to show you. And I'm going to move kind of fast because I don't want this to set up too much and make it too hard to pour. So let's put some gold in here and I will add more if I feel like it needs it. And some gray in there. Oh. Put your tops back on, Erin. We don't need another spill today. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so I'm just going to give these a good, quick mix. I'm starting off with the lightest color first so that it doesn't matter if I go from one to the other as long as I don't go in the opposite direction. And then I also have less dishes to do later. Oh, I just splashed soap onto the table because of course I did. Gosh darn it. Okay, so I'm just scraping the sides and making sure I don't have any giant clumps of unincorporated mica sitting around. Clean up my mess here. So I'll accidentally stick my arm in that or something because Goodness knows, that would be something that happens. Not today. All right, so now I'm going to mix in this gray. Spatula is sticking to the side and I'm slinging Micah everywhere. You know, just a normal day here in the Essential Owl Soapery. <laughs> okay. So I do think I'm going to need more gray because right now I am not liking this color. It's more of a green, which is very strange. Yeah, it definitely needs more gray. So I'm just going to dump a little in directly from the jar. Just a little or a lot. Let's go with a lot. <laughs> okay. Actually, now that I have mentioned that 
it was thickening. It's actually loosening up a little bit, which is quite strange to me. Okay, so I'm not really liking this gray, but I don't want to add any more mica. I know it looks more gray than it actually is on camera, and that is fine, but I do want to add a little bit of charcoal, oh, or a lot. If it turns black, you know what, that's just fine. We'll just have a black and gray soap. Why not? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Oh, you guys, do as I say, not as I do. Try to use a spoon or a little scooper or something to mix your, not to mix, to add your micas and your other colorants to your soap base. Because if not, you end up with a mess like this. Goodness. And actually, as I say that, this looks really nice. This is a super dark stormy gray. It actually has quite a bit of shimmer in it. The last time I used that mica, it actually, I didn't see much shimmer in it at all, despite it being super shimmery and pigmented in the jar. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Yep, I like that. Okay, so on to my method of madness, which is I'm going to take this gold color and I'm going to start off like I would a normal in the pot swirl. I'm going to pour at 12, 3, 6, and 9. So I'm just going to start that off right now. Okay, and then I'm just going to drizzle the rest of this on the top like that. I'm going to save what's in here for the top. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mold in and I am going to pour in one spot. Normally, I would give this big container a little swirl to give it a little bit of a head start and then I would move it up and down and just move it all over the place to get a really good swirl. Well, this time I'm not going to do that and I'm going to pour in one spot in the mold. I'm not going to move it at all. Okay, now this top I am just going to just gently pour some just to even it out a little on top. And also because this is mostly gray in here so i feel like i can do that now i am going to drizzle some of this gold color on the top let me scrape the sides down here I'm just going to drizzle some of this on the top so that we can swirl it. I want to get a good amount of gold on there. going to drip a little bit of the gray back on just to give a little bit more contrast between the two colors, but I don't want to completely cover the gold up. Also, by the way, I don't think I've ever mentioned, but I usually wear some sort of shoe when I'm soaping. And it's a good thing because I just dripped a little bit of soap onto my foot. And if I was barefoot or in flip-flops or something like that, that would be really bad news. So before this gets any more set up, I am going to, if I can find anything to do it with, 
Aha. I am going to swirl the top. And I'm not going too far down into the soap because I don't want to swirl the inside. I just want to swirl the top. There we go. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bang this down just to make sure, actually, I don't think I need to because it's quite liquidy. So I'm going to set this off to the side for just a few moments. I'm going to fill up my little owl mold as much as I can. I'm gonna scrape out both of my containers. Again, I hate wasting soap and I always end up, almost always end up with a little bit. I've mentioned before that it is usually easier to fill up a mold when your soap is a little bit thicker. But I, I usually do end up with a little bit more regardless. I almost never completely fill up a mold and have none left in my containers. And I prefer it that way because I would rather have too much than not enough. All the way. Actually, I need that spatula. What am I doing? Okay, so I don't think that this is going to completely fill up. Oh, yes, it will. Okay. Ignore everything that I just said. I'm actually going to have a little bit extra, which is fine. I will leave it in the mold, or I'm sorry, in the bowl in my container, and I will scrape it off and make little soap balls with it. Okay, so before I bring you all in for a close-up, I'm going to do my cleanup really fast. I actually expected this to set up a lot faster because the bottle says that it accelerates. And at first, I did experience a little bit of acceleration when I was mixing. But you know, it loosened right up and it's as, as liquidy as anything else I've made, that's for sure. So... As I've mentioned before on my channel, you cannot always rely on the fragrance notes. You cannot always rely on a soap fragrance saying that it accelerates or that it rises or that it behaves well. Because you just never know unless you test it. And I'm, I'm really bad about this myself. I really should get into the habit of doing this but I almost never test fragrances sometimes I do sometimes I don't if I've got a soap coming up that I know that I'm going to make sometime in the future I will test it in a very small batch but that almost never happens that's usually for ideas that I have for seasonal or holiday fragrances just so everyone knows. Okay, I'm trying to get my gloves off here without actually touching them. Whew. Okay, let's bring you all in for a close up. So this is what we've got going. Focus, please. There we go. I really, really like this. It reminds me of a tiger. <laughs> Maybe I'll make a soap like this and put it in my line because I really, really like this. I really like it. I don't know if you all can see if I zoom in. Oh, yeah. Look at that sparkle. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a super duper nice soap. So, that's all that I have for this portion of the video. I will see you all for the cut. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Essential Owl. I almost wanted to do my full intro there, <laughs> but I'm putting these videos together now. So I am going to cut the Kentucky bourbon soap that I made yesterday. I actually let it sit for a full day, mostly because I made it relatively late yesterday and then I had to work and I was going to cut it on my lunch break and then I didn't come home for lunch. So it was this whole big thing and then I had things to do after work so I couldn't cut it then either. So hopefully it's not going to break my wire because it is quite firm. So, one thing I do want to point out is if you see this stuff around the corners, this 
is soda ash. I don't normally get soda ash. It's called deep soda ash. And sometimes it just happens. It seems like in my experience, when I use activated charcoal, for some reason, I'm more, it's more likely going to happen as far as soda ash is concerned because I usually don't get it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's just a thing that happens. But I wanted to go on, and by the way, I did test it. It is not lie. It is definitely deep soda ash. So, let me show you all how it turned out. The top is a little bit damp. I sprayed it with rubbing alcohol to sort of bring some life into the top. And isn't that so nice? I hope you all can see that some of the shimmer is still coming through. That is great. There is a tiny air bubble there and a little small one here, but no big deal. And I really like the sides. You can see how you've got the gray, but then you've got some little streaks of black in it. I think that's gonna be really cool. So I'm excited to cut into this one and see how it turns out. So let's go on and do that. Woo, okay. So here is one side and there is the other and as i go further into it the swirl will likely become more apparent and there is some mica that is not fully incorporated or rather it's probably activated charcoal that's not that big of a deal it's not ideal but it's not a big deal it's harmless but isn't that neat look at that i'm excited to see how the swirl looks on the inside of this thing. I have one more soap to cut tonight and then I'm back into making more tomorrow. So there's one side and then the other. Really nice swirl. There's a little bit of mica there that's unincorporated. There you go. And that was for me being a doofus, <laughs> you will have seen it earlier in the video where I accidentally dropped a whole bunch of activated charcoal into my batter and instead of stick blending it like I should have, I just hand mixed it and it didn't mix everything in well enough together. So there's one side and the other. I like doing these sorts of swirls. I like subtle swirls and that is definitely what I got here. I think it creates a really interesting pattern inside the soap. Really nice. This smells really good, by the way. I'm gonna have to make a soap for my own line, at least using this fragrance, if not just sort of replicating this soap entirely because it smells really good. And even my husband said, oh, I would use that <laughs> because it smells really nice. So I like how I'm only getting some swirl on one side. That is interesting. Oops, I just dropped something under my table here. Oh, okay, I see what I'm doing. Move that out of the way. Just for a minute, just fling it back in there, get it out of the way. <laughs> Okay, so there's one side, there's the other, and the top. And of course the top is where this soap really shines in my opinion, but I tried to make this one not quite so flashy, really. I know that there's quite a bit of contrast between the gold and the gray, but I didn't want it to be too overly flashy because this is meant to be a soap for men, even though I can honestly say that I would use a soap that smelled this way, but this is what she specifically requested, so that is what I gave her. Yeah, and again, that's some unincorporated mica there, oops. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So actually, this soap isn't too hard. It's actually really really nice right now because I can handle it without worrying about squishing it and I didn't damage the sides or the corners or anything like that getting it out of the mold so maybe I'll start letting them sit longer 
but I'm probably not going to do that because I'm impatient. <laughs> So there's one side and then the other. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, I think that one's probably my favorite so far. And then the top. So there's one side. And the other. And the top. And the last cut. Boom. There's one side and then the other inside, or I'm sorry, the top. Get off of there. I love the top. And then this is the last bar. A little bit of soda ash, nothing to worry about, just cosmetic. But that is it. That's all that I have for you all today. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this soap, what you think about this channel. Tell me about your day. I just love hearing from you guys. If you have any suggestions for anything you would like to see me make, make sure you also leave that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos, and click that bell icon to get notifications every time that I upload so that you don't miss anything. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.